are you doing that if you're not listening to the union that is making sure that teachers are ready to teach their kids? I don't know how they're doing that. So what I'd like to say is that we're going to fight, 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 because education is a human right. Fight, fight, fight. Education is a human right. Fight, fight, fight. Education is a human right. Fight, fight. I'm here to support our elementary school teachers. I teach high school, but it's not fair the way that they set up the schedule for kids who are distance learners. It is not an equitable goal schedule for them. So I'm here to make sure that it, they are heard. Pina Alvarado Morris. What was that? I've been teaching for 22 years. My kids are, are elementary school kids, and I want to make sure that their teachers are supported. Why don't you just be attacked? What was that? You know, I I think it's the district's way of punishing us for for holding out on that um, MOU and making sure that it was safe for us to go to, back to school before they wanted us to. And so I think, I feel like it's kind of a punishment for them, to us, because we weren't going to go back until it was safe. The way that they had the schedule for when the kids go back to school, online students have to come to school at 7.30 in the morning for like a block and a half, and then nothing until after all the in-person kids are taught, and then they have to come back around 2 o'clock. So there's this big gap between 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock where those kids are not learning and they have the worst schedule and it's not equitable for those kids. I think um, the decrease the distance people who keep on talking about things that they want school to be equitable or sorry, the, the decrease the distance people are all white and those are the ones that have been wanting to have the kids come back in person. And so I think that the kids that are going to suffer the most are going to be the brown and black students who are not coming back to school because they don't have people to advocate for them except for us. My name is Logan and I teach special education and these schedules don't work. How do they not work? My students are, it's just, it's not going to work. I need to support them through daily living skills. I'll have no time to prep. I have to teach kids online and in the classroom. My students are medically fragile. They need to think about our students and our families. I'm here. I'm here because I am a public school teacher. I am a parent. And I have many elementary school colleagues who are being told they have to go back and they're in the exact same situation as me. And it is untenable. We cannot do this work with an hour and a half of prep. We cannot teach six hours a day and no concessions on, on being able to prepare materials for our students. We have actual jobs we're trying to do. We're trying to instill a love of learning. We're trying to see every child. We're trying to make sure they reach their fullest potential and we can't do that if we don't have time to think and plan and prepare our materials to be the best for who they are and what they need. Can I first say Kapu, the best? I love Saturdays at 12. Salsa, reggae on Saturdays, the best. I'm a, a fifth grade Spanish biliteracy teacher at Longfellow Elementary School. I, uh, I've been teaching for four years, and my students, most of them are ready to go back. Um, I'm ready to go back, and I want to continue to provide them with quality education under the current schedule that the school district has put upon us that's not possible 15 minute um, prep periods and seven hours of instructional time in my seven and a half hour contractual workday means that I'm not going to be able to provide high quality education for my students and I have I've done it hasn't worked for every student this year, but I have worked hard for the whole school year to teach them fractions, to teach them how to write an informational article about a topic that they know a lot about. And uh, I feel like now the last six months, uh, six weeks of school, 
Like, I just, I'm not gonna be able to do it well, and, and I'm really upset about that. I want it to be a good experience for my students, whether they decide to stay online or come back to the school, and I just don't think under the current schedule that's possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Talking about the schedules that, that, that for the reopening of the schools, making sure that it's equitable for kids who are in distance learning and for students who decide uh, to come back to return to school. We want to make sure that there's child care available for educators who have to return back into the classroom. We just want to make sure that everything is safe. We want to come back and love our kids. We're still working and fighting for them. We need for everybody to do their part. Uh, I'm here because we need equitable schedules for all our students. I'm a special education teacher. My students will not be served well by this schedule. Most of my families are staying home and it is not fair for them. Why are they doing this? This right here? I mean, why is this district? Oh, I don't know. I can't answer for them. I have no idea why they're doing it. Like, uh, they're not listening to us. They're not listening to the people on the floor, on the ground that are doing the work, right? Like, we work so many hours to serve our children and we're getting told that they get less and it's not okay. So it's going to be unfair for the kids. It's going to be very unfair for the kids that stay home. And for the students that go into school, it's not going to be what parents think it's going to be, right? And so we need to set our teachers up for success. So both the ones who go in person and the ones who stay home can be served well. And uh, how long have you been teaching? Um, well, I've been teaching since I was 20, so 22 years, or 21. But um, for the district, I've been here for about 12 years. And it seems like teachers are being attacked all over the country. They're being blamed for what's going on. Yes. What do you think of that whole thing? It's really disheartening, and I have a lot of friends who are leaving the profession. Across the country, I have friends across the country that are not coming back next year. So it's going to be of the worst education public education. It's, yeah, and uh, it's, I, I'm worried about our schools because the educators that are dedicated are finding finding they can't do it and they need a break, right? And they not, they're not supported by the districts across the country. That, uh, you know, it's not just SFUSD, but, you know, we're fighting for SFUSD students right now. And uh, it's, it's disheartening. I, I've woken up sad. And I love my job. I love my job. I love my students. I love my job. I love my school. I don't want to go anywhere, but uh, I also have a family that I want to be there for. And I'm working literally 14 hours a day, at least. At least. I put my kids to bed, and then I stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning, and then I wake up, and I do it all again. Stressful. Yeah. So teachers, just stress on teachers. Yeah. 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 What's the solution? Well, I feel like they have to listen to us and talk to us, and I don't personally have a solution all by myself, but it has to be more equitable, right? And so the students that stay home need equal education to the ones that are going in person. What's your name? My name's Tara. Okay. Out of your cars! Start putting down the windows! Declare that this is our city! Educators and families and workers make this city right! how hard he works. 
and I work at City College, and I know how hard it is to be a teacher. They don't have enough time. The students need to be treated fairly and properly. They need more time. The, the school district is being forced by politicians into something that's not right, and it has to be fixed.